In the last episode, I found that most of the joints in my front suspension need to be replaced. So uh, I'm going to learn how to do that for the first time in this episode. Going away. But, before I get to that, I wanted to finish up the last two maintenance items I had on this car. And that is to change the spark plugs and wires, and do a power steering flush to get all the old fluid out and put some new fluid in. So, I don't really know what I'm doing with the spark plugs apart from a couple of YouTube videos I've watched, but from what I understand, it's one of the easiest things I could be doing on this car. Um, so, I got started pulling off any screws that appear to be holding the wires down and prepping the new plugs. And then I had to kind of figure out how to pull the plugs out. It was more difficult than I thought to yank them out, and using a good set of pliers is what finally helped me pull them out. Finally. So after that, I put in my uh, socket and was able to simply unscrew the plug out. Um, one of the easiest maintenance items I've been able to do on this car. And then this happened. The socket that I was using got stuck inside the engine. God damn it. I really thought this was going to be the easiest maintenance item, but no, just like everything else, I found myself in a tiny pickle. Hey, by any chance, do you have a magnetic spark plug socket? So I tried calling around for help, and I started researching what I can do to get my socket out. I really didn't expect this to happen. So the socket that I used to put the spark plug in doesn't use a magnet to hold the socket. Instead, it's a friction one, so it's literally stuck on. But the problem is when I pulled, when I tried to pull the wrench out, the socket is stuck to the plug, and then I can't get it out. So I think I'm just gonna have to unscrew the whole thing, and then try a socket that will fit it but won't stick to it, so I can pull it back out. So annoying! My socket is literally stuck in the engine right now. Aha! This is like jammed on. So I was able to get away with just putting the new plug in with the pliers and screwing that in. Let me make sure the new one fits before I mess with this. Pull it in. Aha! Ugh. And after struggling a bit reaching over at an awkward angle, I was finally able to pull off the old wires and uh, put the new ones in. And from there, it's pretty uh, easy going. Um, I put that one in and then did the last two cylinders too. And it's pretty all good to go. Aha! Feels pretty good. Not too much of a hiccup. Spark plugs are done. So the next thing I could do to procrastinate on rebuilding my suspension was putting in the new power steering fluid. Oh man, this is dark. So I bought a better pump after my experience with the diff last time. And I basically what I was doing was pumping out the old fluid, pouring some new fluid in until it's full, turning the wheels left and right a bit uh, to get the fluid to circulate, and then restart the process so I can pump out a different batch of fluid. And sure enough, the fluid that started coming out was much cleaner. Oh man, I pulled out so much fluid and it still is not perfectly clean. This is the fluid here. This is the very first flush going here. And you can see it starts to get a little bit more red. And then I had to get a couple more cups here. And by the end of it, this is what I got to, which is at least... This is the fluid that was coming out, which is a bit more red and cleaner than the, uh, the black gunk that I started with. Didn't expect to use all of it, but I did. So I'm glad I did it now. I didn't realize how bad the old food was. Cool. That was easy.
And that I had nothing left to procrastinate with, it was finally time to figure out how to rebuild my front suspension. This was the most daunting work I've yet done on the car. Um, I've I had watched all the videos, I knew what had to be done, but there were so many things I had to work on that I'd never touched before, so it was pretty scary to get started. So I kind of just dove right in, I got started here on the outer tie rod, so all I have to essentially do here is bolt the top off and use this tool that I borrowed from AutoZone that pops the joint out. Because there's nothing mechanically holding it together anymore. It's just stuck together. So uh, I got started on that. Whoa! Wow. <laughs> Holy crap. It was a pretty violent pop. But uh, it was pretty satisfying, it wasn't hard at all. And then I realized my inner tie rod is also worn out and needs to be replaced. So the more I look at stuff, the more expenses I pick up. So I moved on, uh, the next thing I wanted to pull off was the lower ball joint, which you can see. And to do, it, and to do that, there's three screws that need to come out. But to get to one of those screws, there's this other screw, the one that I started working on here that was in the way. Um, but nothing was moving. I tried multiple other screws, while, bolts while I was at it, but nothing was moving. So I had to give up and go to Home Depot, and then I made my most overdue purchase yet. That's right, I finally bought an impact drill. <laughs> But the screw was on a little too tight. But while I was at Home Depot, I didn't just buy an impact drill. I'd finally learnt my lesson. I bought every tool I saw that I could remotely need in the future. And one of those was this extending breaker bar, which would get, let me get much more leverage. So I'm so glad I got that. That came in handy. And ta-da! I got that lower bolt out. So while I had that bolt out, I figured I might as well unbolt the rest of the strut and get it out of the way. So I got started on unbolting the two at the two nuts at the top that hold the rest of the strut in place. But that was a little difficult. So instead, I went around and I unbolted every bolt that I could pull out with the impact drill uh, and get to the tougher ones a little later. here. I've been trying to pull this one off. Hey! Woo! Alright, end links are out. I'm gonna try getting the, uh, the shock out. Alright, uh, I realized I haven't been labeling my bolts, so I'm going to uh, start labeling my bolts now. This is how I'm going to keep track of what goes where. <laughs> With 
all the other bolts loosened up, I got back to pulling out the shock, and I finally got the top two bolts out. Um, but then the next problem was figuring out how to actually pull the, the, loot, the strut out. It was completely unbolted from the car. It was just physically stuck in there, and I couldn't lower the suspension enough to pull it out. So I got pretty creative trying to like put my weight on it to pull it out, but nothing was working. And when I looked online, it told me that I, the best way to go is to unbolt the entire upper control arm off from the outside the car, which will get you enough room to actually pull up the strut. Um, so I got started on that. And uh, this was pretty scary. I mean, this is a massive bolt that holds in half of this main suspension geometry. So it's pretty scary to feel like I'm pulling major components out of the car. Um, but I didn't really have any other choice. And with that finally pulled out, the, I noticed the strut was moving around a bit more. It, had, it definitely had more room. Aha! And voila! Woo. And this was so oh. satisfying to finally have a major oh piece of the suspension out. Oh. Oh. It was pretty nerve-wracking to get started pulling apart a lot of the suspension, not knowing if I had the skills to pull or knowledge to pull it back together. So it's pretty nice to see that I was actually starting to make some real progress. I did unbolted the, uh, the speed sensor which is used for the ABS system and I got started trying to uh, unbolt the uh, get back to the lower ball joint and here you can see the upper control arm that I unbolted it is completely out and flopped out Now that I could reach that last lower ball joint uh, bolt, I got started on that and I quickly realized that I don't have enough leverage with that upper control arm out because it keeps flopping around. So I had to put the screw back in so I could get working on that. Um, but no, <laughs> the brake caliper was kind of in the way so I had to pull that off as well and I zip tied it off to the corner. Man, I got most of the suspension off, um, and I'm pretty much ready to start replacing all the joints. So I'm trying to get the last few, the last bolts off that hold the joints. Uh, I only actually have the lower ball joint with me right now. The rest of them are still on the way. So I was trying to get the uh, the lower ball joint assembly off so I can put in the new one, and then put in the top one later on. Uh, I'm kind of stuck on the last bolt, but this is how much progress I've made so far. I have disconnected the tie rod, disconnected the upper control arm, I put it in back in now to make other things easier, uh, disconnected the caliper, it's now zip tied back there so that it doesn't snap the brake line and spill brake fluid all over my face, and I have been dowsing all of these bolts and penetrating oil. There's three bolts holding the uh, lower ball joint in. There's one deep inside there, which I'm still working on. Yeah, you can see it there. There's the top main one right there. And then there's the side bolt right there. So my thing, I was hoping I can get those off today, but no luck. But my plan here is, uh, is to get those three off, put the lower assembly in while, uh, the pr so the main problem is the black cable coming through that I'm not able to disconnect from the, nu the knuckle here. So if I were to take off both ball joints, the knuckle would just fall and drag that cable with it and strain it. So uh, I can only remove one ball joint at a time. So that's why I'm trying to replace the bottom one right now while the top one's holding on. 
Then I can replace the top one while the bottom one is holding everything together. So, that's the plan. Um, yeah. This is pretty cool. I, uh, never done any of this before. But, um, uh, it won't be bad, can it? It's, uh, it'll be okay. So, this is not exactly the work I had intended to do when I got this car. It was just supposed to be maintenance. But, uh, here I am. So, um... Next episode, I'm going to make much more progress actually disassembling some of this and hopefully get enough parts in that I can start putting some stuff in. So, uh, I will see you there.